Hi, I'm the director for Common Knowledge Trust and we produce Birthing Better Childbirth Preparation online course. And in our continuation through this education series, I want to talk to you today about the history of childbirth in my lifetime. I gave birth to my first child in 1970. So I want you all to think back on that time. You probably don't have a clue what it was like. In the United States, there were no midwives. We all went to the hospital, and we just experienced standards of care. An enema, shaved vagina, we had to stay in bed, we couldn't eat, we couldn't drink, we couldn't walk around. When it came time to deliver, we were taken to theater, we were lying on our back, our arms were strapped to the table, our feet were in stirrups, we were given a, a, an episiotomy 100% of the time, our babies were taken to the nursery. We weren't encouraged to breastfeed. Our husbands were permitted to be with us, but no one else. And if we had a cesarean, they couldn't come in because at that time, cesareans were still classical cesareans, where the uterus was cut up and down and women were knocked out under general anesthetic. So times have changed. 1982, there were choices. I actually gave birth to my son in a hospital eight weeks premature and I birthed him myself. So that's a big change. But something happened in the 1960s and 70s that was very unique and that was that in every hospital across the country Lamaze classes were taught and there was a high societal expectation that all women learn breathing and relaxation skills with their partner and they practice them. So they went into the hospital environment where there were no choices and standards of care using some breathing techniques and some relaxation techniques. People at that time also could pay privately for the Bradley Method classes. And by the 1980s, that had all changed. The skills were gone and they were replaced with the birth plan. So what happened? And I didn't actually understand what happened until I came to New Zealand in the 90s. And then I did some research about the history of childbirth in New Zealand. And I discovered that in New Zealand, Lamaze and the Bradley Method were not particularly well known until the 70s. But in the 1950s and 60s, Grantly Dick Reed's method of childbirth without fear was taught in childbirth classes, 12 classes of breathing and relaxation. Now what was really interesting and something that's important to understand is that Bradley, Dick Reed, and Lamaze were all male obstetricians, which is not a bad thing. They're on the cold face of birth. They understand that birth was becoming more medicalized and they wanted people to be able to have more natural births. So they developed the first set of universal skills. I mean, we are all one humanity. But we have many societies, many cultures, and many ways of doing things. So we often see ourselves as quite different. But Lamaze, the Bradley Method, and the Birth Without Fear Method really were the first approach to childbirth that was universal. But there was something else about those three approaches and all of the skills-based resources up to today with the exception of Birthing Better. And that is that they were focused on achieving a natural and painless childbirth. And so what happened by the 1970s was not enough women had achieved those. And so birth advocates began to say, well, skills don't work. So they focused more on choices. Under the assumption, which is that all women know what they want for their birth. So the birth plan began to be developed. And it has become the standard of how women today approach childbirth. But there's a problem with that, and that is, what do you know? And what do you know you want and don't want? You can do a lot of research, that's for sure. But even if you have a streamlined birth plan of 10 things, how does anybody, your birth professional, know whether those ten, which of those 10 things are really important for you? I don't. I've talked to tens of thousands of women around the world, and I can honestly tell you, women will say, I want music played at the birth, and then they, want it, they say, just shut it off, I can't stand it. Or they don't want pain relief, 
and during the labor they find labor contractions and terribly painful and they want pain relief and their support person says but you said you didn't want it and the woman says you're not doing this you don't know how much it hurts so they have pain relief and then six months later they're pissed off at that person who helped them get pain relief so birth plans are very very tricky it doesn't mean you shouldn't make them but what happened was that they replaced skills and that's the problem so way back when had Bradley and Lamaze and Dick Reed really understood profoundly what they were doing, they would have just said, every woman should use skills to birth their baby. I mean, in reality, why should just some women? It doesn't really make sense. Even if you have every intervention in the world, if you're conscious, you can use good breathing skills and good relaxation skills, and your partner can help you do that and help you cope with what's unpleasant or challenging. So Birthing Better is the only skills-based resource. There was one developed by families, so you know that those skills work in all births, and really is focused on every birth. You got pregnant to have a baby, not a particular type of birth. So I want to tell you also about the changes that occurred from the 70s to the present day. In 1970, the only birth control was diaphragm and condoms. Birth control pills didn't exist. Abortions were illegal. Cesareans were classical, which meant that women were unconscious, and subsequent pregnancies became increasingly dangerous. Women didn't want to be left with scars on their belly, so the low-line or bikini-cut cesarean and the epidurals or spinals began to become available. You have more choices. You can usually get up and move around. You can drink or you can eat. You can sometimes have more than one person with you. You can have your baby with you all the time and early discharge and be encouraged to breastfeed. There are so many positive changes. But the one hugely negative change is that very few women are skilled now. When I gave birth in 1970, you would bet that in that hospital, and every hospital across the United States, because people were using breathing and relaxation, that staff and obstetricians saw most of birthing women using skills and fathers helping. Now they see very few. So we have to educate you, and we have to educate you to rethink childbirth. Because if we can educate you to the importance of becoming skilled, you can educate your friends and family members who you love and who you want to have a positive birth experience. This is really important. If your choices unfold, great. Very few of you get what you want. <laughs> However, everybody can use skills. And when you look back on your birth, instead of feeling, I didn't get what I want or the birth wasn't what I liked, you look back and say, I may not have liked it, but I feel empowered by how I behaved and how I coped. So it's really important that you understand that both positive things are available to you now that weren't available in 1970, and there's a lack and that lack is your skills. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.